as I mentioned before, Kadetica as a data is a GPU accelerated in memory columnar database. And so what that means is that we're, we look and feel just like any relational database. Um, in this case here, I'm looking at uh, my my Kinetica interface here, the, my web interface, and I'm specifically highlighting this Twitter table because it has about four billion plus records. It's actually constantly streaming in new records. So as I hit the refresh, you'll notice that my record count goes up on that table, or it should go up. Maybe not. These are always live demos, so these are always fun. But it should go up, and well, this is the t the reason why I'm pointing this out is because this is a table that we'll be interacting with in terms of uh, some of the visualization. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to switch over to um, look at that same Twitter data set. But what I'm looking at, is, I'm actually using Esri's uh, JavaScript API framework to help visualize this. So that's a pretty important part to note there is that Kinetica, we support all of our map rendering in an OGC compliant format. So what that means is that we can easily integrate all of our map rendering and our visualizations and our data with Esri or Mapbox or Google Maps or any of the OGC compliant services that can, that can uh, accept those services and feeds. So for example, I'll highlight my social media feed here and you can see that my Twitter data set renders uh, over mostly North America here is where our target is. And this is basically dynamically displaying 4 billion plus records across North America. And this is not pre-cached, this is not pre-loaded or pre-rendered, this is all happening dynamically on the fly. And so I can prove that by zooming in and re-rendering and reclassifying my maps. So you'll notice that as I zoom in, my map will completely re-render um, and reclassify based on where my zoom is. And I'm not pre-baking or pre-caching any of this information. This is all rendering dynamically with 4 billion plus records on the map. So let me zoom in pretty tightly to um, the Portland, Oregon area because what I'm going to do is kind of go through some very quick and very simple analysis that we've done with Kinetica in combination with obviously NVIDIA and Esri in this case to help with the rendering side of things. So as I zoom into Portland, um, I'm actually gonna turn off my this specific layer because what I'm going to do is I'm then gonna turn on a, that, that same layer, but it's now been, it's now been rendered a little bit differently and it's actually been filtered down. So what I did with this data set is I switched between this Twitter data set, which is just basically all of the twi Twitter events um, that are happening in this given area. And then I, I narrowed it down by applying a couple filters, a couple of NLP text filters. And those filters were specifically zeroing in on um, a couple different uh, a couple of different combinations of sentiment around a topical interest. And th in this case, a topical interest was around organic food. So basically I combined a, a result set from my Twitter data set to look at the Twitter text around uh, topics that were focused around organic food, farm to table, grass fed, et cetera. I basically combined 15 to 20 different conditions of a NLP text search and created a, a resulting data set here. And that data set is now what you're looking at on the map is actually a um, is class break rendered. And so what that means is I'm actually styling each data, each of the values differently based on their sentiment value. So where I see a green dot on the map is basically showing me a, uh, a positive sentiment social media event around that topical sentiment of organic food, grass fed, farm to table, et cetera. And anywhere you see a purple dot on the map is actually showing me a negative trend um, sentiment of, of that same topical content. So just by looking at the map here, you can kind of get, you can kind of make some assumptions. There's a lot of data on the map here, obviously, but you can kind of see where there's clusters and pockets of information occurring. So I generally make the assumption, at least for me, I don't know about you guys on the, on the, on the webinar, but for me, I'm seeing a pretty high concentration of what I think are positive trends, um, positive, positive trending sentiment, uh, t uh, social media events around the downtown Portland area, and especially as I disperse out to the uh, the southeast areas, and especially to the southwest, I kind of see more uh, more negative trends. That's kind of my gut reaction by looking at this map. Well, let's do let's do a little bit of analysis. So let's overlay a different another layer on the map, and what this is actually showing us is locations of USDA certified organic food producers in the Portland area. So. What's the purpose of doing this? The reason why I wanted to do this is because I just wanted to see if I could generate any rough correlation to where positive or negative sentiment values were occurring in relation to their proximity to where organic food producer locations might be. Um, and generally, I can kind of see that, you know, it looks like you generally get positive trending uh, pockets of sentiment around where these um, around where these producers are. But let's do let's look at this a slightly different way. 
instead of looking at it um, by social media where all the unique events are occurring, let's aggregate all those events to a block group level. So by doing this, we're actually looking at all of the all of the events, um, and but we've aggregated them to the block groups. And what we've done then is then normalized it by the number of tweets. So we're taking this the sentiment value normalized by the number of tweet events that are happening, and just to kind of give us a baseline average, right? So if we look at this, we're actually seeing that what we saw earlier, or at least my gut check reaction earlier by looking at the social media events in downtown Portland, where I thought that that's where there's higher concentrations of positive uh, concentrations of uh, positive trending uh, events occurring. Well, if I normalize it by the number of events to, to the average sentiment, it's actually lower than what what my gut check reaction was, and I actually see higher values as I go to the areas that I generally saw uh, um, what my gut check reactions said there was there was uh, more negative trending events. So let's look at this maybe a slightly different way. I'm going to look at this through a comparative analysis viewer, right? So I can look at both at the same time. So same kind of a thing is that here I'm looking at the raw tweet events. Again, I can kind of make my gut check reaction based on where I'm seeing the colors, the pocket, the concentrations of colors. And then here I'm actually looking at the darker areas show me where the um, aggregated to the block group, where the tweets are and, and averaged out by the sentiment value um, over the uh, over the number or volume of tweets themselves. And it just kind of, again, this isn't any kind of super deep analysis or I can't really probably glean any kind of um, uh, deep, meaningful insight out of this, but it's just kind of an interesting way to analyze some of the data um, and, and analysis of large scale visualizations.